Hi, welcome to this Racing Profits Guide to Racing at Southern with me, Sam Laurie, and the Racing Post's all-weather racing expert, James Pyman. Uh, over the next few minutes, we're going to try and pinpoint a few factors to help you find winners at your local course. Uh, and James, the first thing to note about Southern is the surface. It's fibre sand, which makes it different to the other all-weather all tracks. Yeah, it's the only track in Britain with a fibre sand surface. Um, they, they inherited the surface from Wolverhampton. Uh, probably 10, 15 years ago now, um, this surface needs to be harrowed and worked to, to keep it in racing condition, particularly when temperatures drop. And as a result, it can be extremely testing. Um, if, if you want to gauge how fast a surface rides, it's probably akin to good to soft, slow, soft on turf. It's testing, suits galloping types and prominent races, and often suits horses with pronounced knee actions. Mm -hmm. So that's fairly different then to the other all-weather tracks and does that mean there's more kickback as well? It does unfortunately, yeah, kickback can be a, a really big issue and it's, it's part of the reason why there is such a pace bias at Subtle because it is an advantage to get out there away from the kickback in front and um, you know it's just unfortunately one of those things, it's a trait of the surface but it, it doesn't seem to, to bother all horses there, you can get hold up horses that, that will handle the kickback and won't be inconvenienced by it. But as a result, the surface is extremely selected. If a, if a horse doesn't like kickback, it's very unlikely to reproduce its form at Subtle. Mm. And what about the, uh, the course characteristics? Does it favour particular running styles or anything like that? Well, galloping, and you know, again, you want to be prominent. It's a left-handed oval. It's, it's, it's a bit like the courses we see in America, but the, the difference being the bends, I think, are a bit more sweeping, um, and there's longer straight sections. The, the straight sections are about three and a half furlongs. Um, all, all races are on the round course apart from five furlong sprints. They've got a five furlong straight course there. And it's, it's an unusual mix, really, because it's a flat course, so it's actually quite a sharp track, but it's got an attritional surface. So it, it, it creates unique demands on racehorses. Mm -hmm. Now, one key point that uh, James has pinpointed is front running success uh, at Southern. We've got a graphic um, we can take a look at here, James, and it, it highlights the pace bias at the track. Yeah, I mean, this contrasts Southern against other polish track courses in Britain. Um, the, these stats are taken from handicaps with eight runners or more since 2005. And, you know, you'll see here that 84% of sprints were won by horses that raced, raced prominently at Southern. This compares to 67% at poly track. Um, and um, sprints, front runners have got 24% success rate in sprints at the course. So, you know, these stats really do illustrate what an advantage it can be to be on the pace there. Mm -hmm. And we've got a race that, that displays this uh, perfectly. It's a, a horse called Aubrecia winning there in February. Yeah, this race illustrates a lot of points. Um, this, this was Aubrecia's first run on fibre sand, and I think she improved for the switch in surface. Um, she's trained by Alan McCabe and ridden here by Hayley Turner, and you, you'll see Turner is hell-bent on getting to the lead. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Abrisha shows plenty of speed, got a pronounced knee action, really, really suited to the surface this filly. And here you'll see Tate Turner on the bend that she, you'd thought that she might go down the inside route, but that's not the place to go at Stubble because they work the track and a lot of material gets pushed into the inside. Therefore, the surface can be a lot deeper against the inside rail and it can ride slower. Turner avoids the inside. She aims for the tyre tracks of the tractors that have been working the course. This is a common tactic at this course. Um, and you'll see that Aubrecia stays down the centre of the track and wins well. Um, something to notice is that the first two, all the way through the race, stay there throughout, and this is often the case. Three or four horses will go off in the lead, in, in, particularly in sprints at Southern, and they just stay there. Very few horses can get in the race from behind. Um, I think it, it is quite difficult to come from behind, particularly when the surface is riding deep there, and of course, the horses that are held up are always facing the teeth of the kickback. Yeah, and coming down the centre of the track, I imagine that's something fairly sort of idiosyncratic for Southern because at other courses you want to be on the inside rail, but, but definitely not there at Southern. Yeah, it's, it's been like that for, for, for seasons. I, I, I can't remember many occasions of horses winning up against the inside rail. It's, it's extremely rare for that to happen. Um, you know, jockeys get used to knowing where the, where the best ground is, the faster strips of ground is. They actually, some of them look for the tyre tracks, you know, they create faster lanes in the surface. So as a result, it can definitely be good to side with jockeys that have got plenty of experience around the track. Mm -hmm. Now we've talked about the, the differences between the, uh, the all-weather tracks. Does form from fibre sand transfer to poly track and vice versa? Well it, well, it can do. I mean, some, some horses will handle all artificial surfaces, but you, you, you've got to treat 
horses that have run well at Southern when they go to other polytrack courses with caution because, you know, the surfaces are very different. Polytrack is, is more, I'd say, akin to good, good to firm on turf. Um, s the surface at Southern is a lot more attritional. Um, so it's not a given. I, I'm always wary of, 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 say, a Southern winner going to Wolverhampton or Lingfield. Mm -hmm. Now, you might think that recent form in the book is the main thing to look for when finding winners uh, at Southern, but that's not necessarily the case. You found a bit of an angle here looking at pedigrees, James. Yeah, you, you find that the, the progeny of certain sires seem to do well on the fibre sand surface. It, you know, part of the reason might be, as I mentioned earlier, about, about knee action. Um, you know, progeny of certain sires seem to have pronounced knee actions. And if you can find a stallion who, who seems, who most of their progeny seem to be good at the course, it definitely can give you an angle. Mm -hmm. And a few of those uh, sires uh, just listed here um, on a graphic, you've got um, got them there. Nayef, Jubawi, Refuse to Bend, Street Cry and Giants Causeway. Yeah, they, all these five sires have shown a good, good profit loss figure at the course since 2007 and, and their progeny have healthy strike rates. I, I, I would follow all of them. So we can see an example of this uh, theory in action now, James, uh, with a horse called Misleading Promise, uh, a son of Refuse to Bend. Yeah, misleading promise had become a bit frustrating. He's actually drawn a blank in eight previous starts, but scored here on his Fiber Sam debut. And, and you can see why, because um, the horse is showing a, a high knee action and I think improved quite a bit for this change of surface. Um, you know, I, I've been following Sire stats at Southern for some seasons and making a, a tidy profit from it. You, you do need to follow it closely, and, and, um, but it's definitely a good angle. Pivotal, for example, used to be the king, but as sires get older, they have fewer progeny. Um, and so you've got to try to get with the, the latest ones that are coming through. So I've purposefully here picked five stallions who are likely to have plenty of runners at Southern over the coming seasons. Dolly, misleading promise with the advantage, heading up towards the line, and misleading promise goes on to score by a length and a half. Red gift got it. And uh, what about a, a more traditional uh, way of trying to find winners to draw? How much of an effect does this have? Well, I. You would, thought, you would have thought the low draw would be a big advantage given it's a left-handed course, but because of what we spoke about earlier with, with the surface often being slower near the rail, I don't think it's, it's the case really. I think if you've got a horse with early speed, they can um, you know, negate or nullify what can, can, can be a bad draw. I suppose a slow starter drawn out wide, they're quite inconvenienced because they're likely to, to face more kickback, but um, the draw doesn't usually enter calculations when I'm looking at races at Southern. Mm -hmm. And moving on to jockeys, I mean, again, these things can be quite uh, trend-based, but, but are there any particular riders that you like following at the track? Well, I think Joe Fanning and Robert Winston are, are just very reliable. Um, they, they know like every speck of fibre sand at the course, and they keep it simple and often ride horses close to the pace. Um, Graham Gibbons is a jockey I like at all, all of the all-weather courses. Um, he's definitely a, a, a guy to follow when he teams up for David Barron. Um, Hayley Turner, we saw earlier, g giving a breacher an excellent ride. And, and another one who's done really well since he's made the switch from the jumps is, is Graham Lee. He's, he's excellent. He's always thinking about saving energy. And, um, you know, it's a very taxing surface. So, uh, you know, I'm always keen to, to, to follow Graham Lee at Southern. Mm -hmm. In a race where few are getting involved, seems to have a two and a half length advantage. Ridgeway Hawk is only slowly reducing the deficit and seems to will go on to make virtually all of the running and pushed out with Hanson Hills wins well. So a few jockeys there to stay on the right side of. Uh, moving on to trainers, um, you've got a list uh, for us uh, of ones to keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mark Johnson, Joe Fanning, we mentioned earlier, would have been riding most of these winners, but one in four runners who sent to the course since 2009 landed the spoils. It's a really solid strike rate. Um, other trainers who have loads of winners at the course are Brian Ellison, Brian Smart, Kevin Ryan, Alan McCabe. Um, and, and another trainer who has a slightly smaller string who is definitely always worth looking for is James Given. He does particularly well with younger horses, um, has a 20% 20, 20 strike rate with two-year-olds at the course. Mm -hmm. And any particular trainer-jockey combinations that it might be worth uh, paying attention to? Well, when Huey Morrison sends horses up from, from the south and, and Winston teams up with him, that, that's a good combination. They've got a 40% strike rate. Um, I always like looking for Stevie Donahue riding for Ian Williams. They ride a lot of the Marwan Kukash horses. And I like the two Jameses when they link up as well, James Sullivan and James Given. Girl at the Sands under James Sullivan. He's holding on near the line, and Girl at the Sands gets home in front. Mm -hmm. Okay, so an awful lot to consider then. Just to sum things all up, we've got 
the, the main points you need to, to bear in mind, James. First of all, you need a horse that handles the surface. Yeah, you, you've got to treat any horse that has never run at Savile before with caution. You, you usually you want to concentrate on horses that have got previous Savile form. If not, use the pedigrees to give you some sort of insight. Mm -hmm. and they need to stay the distance that they're racing over pretty well. You don't want suspect stamina. You don't want suspect st stamina at, um, at Suffolk. It's a very taxing surface. They need to stay that distance really well. And number point three, suits those who travel and have the speed to hold a prominent position. Yeah, the main, well, for two reasons really. It's, it's, a, it's a sharpish course and also holding a prominent position is an advantage because you stay out of the kickback. And finally, following sire stats at the course. Yeah, I think this is a really good one, particularly if you're statistically minded, you know, there are databases out there or you can use the Racing Post site to get some information. Um, but if you can latch onto a sire who does really well with, with his progeny, um, it can often be a good way of finding value. Okay, well many thanks James. Uh, hopefully we've pointed you in the direction of a few winners. Good luck with your betting.